what's up guys? Today we have a slightly different episode. I don't know what these are for, but I'm about to find out. So I'm gonna put some of these away so I can clear out my workspace and we'll figure out what these are for here in a moment. <laughs> Box number one. Hopefully it's full of more tubes. It won't be very hard to sort these gems. Hard is in all capital letters. I have a hunch about what this clue means. Oh, we've got a ton of stuff in here. So we have a bit of a spread, but I think I know what two or three of these guys are. These two fluorites, one of them is bicolor and faceted, and the other is rough and cubic and craggy and has that classic fluorite crystal habit to it. And then this, is doing some crazy stuff optically along the different axes. Has me thinking that I know what this is as well. A really beautiful light blue colored piece of rough topaz with some black inclusions, crystal inclusions on the back. We've got two faceted topazes, a blue and a colorless, so I'm gonna put those guys together. And then we've got this beautiful sort of amber colored, golden yellow, orangish topaz. They call this imperial topaz. So we've got three topazes, two fluorites. This is selenite which is actually a variety of gypsum. So it's very delicate, very soft. Scratches easily. Fluorite is also not overly hard either. It's a four on the Mohs scale. And topaz is an eight on the Mohs scale of hardness. So we've got gypsum is a two on the Mohs scale. Fluorite is a four and topaz is an eight. Based on the clue, I think we're going to be tackling the Mohs scale of hardness today, which is super exciting. Hardness is one of the first things that I think of. It's sort of one of the fundamental physical properties of a gemstone or a mineral. And it's also important to know the hardness of something or the relative hardness of something. If you're going to be wearing it or putting it in jewelry, you would never wear a piece of gypsum in jewelry. If you were to make jewelry out of fluorite, you might be cautious about making it into a ring because your hands are gonna bump into things. If you wear it on a necklace or on earrings, they're a little bit safer and out of the way. And with topaz, you're good to go. A gemstone's hardness or a mineral's hardness is its ability to resist abrasion on its surface by another material. So basically, how difficult is it to scratch? That is what hardness measures, the Mohs scale, that is. So an interesting thing to remember about the Mohs scale is that it's not linear. The Mohs scale sort of measures stones' hardness relative to other stones. A diamond, which is a 10 on the Mohs scale, it is the hardest natural material on Earth. It is not one step harder than a nine. It is many steps harder than a nine because it's non-linear. It's sort of like the further up the scale you go, it sort of increases exponentially in a way. I think we're going to be setting up a little visual guide to the most scale of hardness. So let's get right into it. So we've got one, two, three, four is fluorite. Now we've got topaz, which is a 10, nine, eight on the hardness scale. We got gypsum at number two here. I don't know what we're gonna fill in the rest of this with, so let's find out. Whoa, a ton of stuff in here. Okay, so we've got a couple specimens in here. I've got a set of tweezers, which is interesting because these uh, tweezers are steel. So steel is a hardness of six and a half on the most scale, which means that there are a number of specimens that I will not be touching with the tweezers because the tweezers would scratch them. Quartz, which is a seven on the most scale of hardness, would also resist scratching from the tweezers, which has nice aquamarine on it as well. This is a really lovely piece. Quartz is a seven on our most scale of hardness, which is, for me, where I start being very comfortable with all types of jewelry. So we've got a little faceted purple guy, a large faceted gray brown body color, and a nice pink guy. So, so these are amethyst smoky quartz and rose quartz, all sitting at around a seven on the most scale of hardness. This guy, you see the big hexagonal tablet. This guy's very rough, very beat up, but this is a rough piece of corundum, a nine on the most scale of hardness, exceptionally hard. In fact, many watches, they don't use glass on their watch face. They use clear colorless sapphire because it's harder than glass and there's not a single scratch on the face of this watch. So I'm gonna put our corundum right up there. I believe I've got a ruby and a sapphire in this little case. I can see the growth lines on this sapphire. They're pretty, pretty dramatic. They kind of go like this. 
And then we've also got this beautiful ruby. So that sapphire is natural. This ruby, however, it's very large, very clean, beautifully colored. It is a lab-made ruby. It's synthetic. That being said, it does share all the same physical, optical, chemical properties as its naturally occurring counterpart, this guy. So they're both a nine on the hardness scale. So I'm gonna put both of these guys up on my little pedestal here. Now this guy, this is cool. So this is a rock crystal quartz. It's been carved and fasted in a really interesting way. So we're gonna do a little experiment. So I mentioned earlier that steel is a six and a half on the most scale of hardness. Quartz, which is what this guy's made of, is a seven. In theory, a six and a half sounds like it's very close to seven. So I'm just gonna scratch away at this quartz. <laughs> it's not doing anything. It's not doing anything. I'm really, I'm applying some downward pressure. I want it to scratch. It's not going to though. It would scratch the fluorite. It would scratch the gypsum. It will not scratch these and it will not scratch our seven. In fact, I'm gonna go try and scratch the topaz. It's not flat, you know, it's, it's gotta be resistant. It's got, you know, I'm hearing scraping, but it is breaking down the tweezers. Trying to scratch this topaz, I'm leaving bits of steel on the crystal itself. We're gonna get a little bit more destructive. The tweezers couldn't cut it, 6.5 versus seven. But if we take our eight and we put it against this quartz, what do we think is gonna happen? I can feel that. I can feel it dragging. Th these guys, the tweezers just kind of glide along the surface. This topaz, I can hear it and I can feel it. Listen to the difference between the tweezers scraping and the topaz scraping. Oh, here's, here's one side. I didn't touch it. Here's the other side that I just scratched up with the topaz. I feel bad. Truthfully, I feel kind of bad about that. Our topaz emerges victorious. Let's put these guys back and let's find a home for the rest of these guys. We've got this, which is talc. It feels so interesting under your fingers. It feels soft. This doesn't quite feel as soft, the gypsum as talc does. Talc feels like it wants to be powder. And if I really tried and dug in, I could probably peel off flakes of this. Talc is our number one, the softest mineral on this table. It's not gonna get any softer than this. Your fingernail is a three on the most scale of hardness. This is a one. Ooh, did you see that? I feel like Wolverine right now. Obviously, it's gonna be useless in jewelry. I just scratched the hell out of it with just my fingernail. But it is uh, very useful for a lot of industrial applications. It's easily pulverized, talcum powder, baby powder, some cosmetics and makeup also use talc, as well as it's great for absorbing liquid as well. So we're gonna slide this guy in at number one, proudly and industrially applicable to number one. <laughs> so we're missing our three, our five, and our six. So the last little guy from that box is this little red square cut gem. It's a lovely little red color. It's very clear. And that is because this is glass. It is faceted glass. It's only a five and a half on the most scale of hardness. So I can't scratch it with my fingernail. All right, we're gonna slide it right here between five and six. We're gonna put our little glass faceted guy right on there. Now, this is important to remember. If you have a piece of jewelry with a red faceted stone in it and you're not totally sure what it is, if it is glass, it's definitely gonna have more scratches on it than if it's a ruby. Spinel also has a higher hardness than glass, so it's also going to have much fewer scratches than a piece of glass in your jewelry. If you're storing jewelry and you're not totally sure what they are, hardness is one of those fundamental physical properties. You've got to know them at least a little bit in your head so you know how to safely store your gemstones together. Lastly, we have our penny. This is a three and a half on the most scale of hardness, so I can't quite scratch it with my fingernail. I could scratch it with any number of these, but my fingernail is not quite gonna do it. So I'm gonna throw in another intermediary right here between our four and our three to represent the penny at three and a half. Okay, next box. All right, let's see what we got. We got one blue faceted stone here. We got a big piece of rough. These two faceted guys, this little lovely, almost iridescent blue fella, and then our diamonds. These are our number 10. This is the hardest natural material in the world. It forms deep in the mantle over millions of years under extreme heat and pressure made of pure carbon, which is very interesting because graphite is also made of pure carbon, but it is much, 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 much softer. 
than diamond, which is why we can write with it. You know, I don't have diamond tipped pencils because diamond don't scratch the way graphite does. Even compared to number nine, corundum, on the Mohs scale of hardness, diamond is almost four times harder to scratch than corundum. And that's why we've given it a very high pedestal. This isn't a marketing thing, this is science. So one interesting property that diamond has in common with this much softer mineral, kyanite, is something called differential hardness. And what that means is if you try and scratch it in one direction, it has one level of hardness. And if you try and scratch it in a different direction, it has a different level of hardness, depending on the direction of the scratch attempt. So interestingly for diamond, it's a 10 in both directions. Kyanite is about a four and a half to five hardness in the direction of these grains. And if you scratch up parallel along with these fibers, it's a four and a half to five. If I try and scratch perpendicular to the fibers, suddenly its hardness is a six and a half to seven. So in one direction, it sits about here, just above fluorite. And in this other direction, it's up there with quartz. How cool is that? So we're gonna put it right about there. Depending, on a bad day, it's over here. On a good day, it's over here. This here, the color, is pretty distinct. This is apatite, which we learn in our gemological course is sort of representative of number five on the most scale of hardness. I'm gonna put our big guy down here. And we've got two little faceted appetites, two lovely colored stones. All right, final box. Ooh, nice, okay, cool, cool, cool. Look at this guy, huge parallelogram of a stone. I love this, this is calcite, and it's a fascinating little stone. And then this is labradorite, which is a type of feldspar. And this is our number six, right here, to round out our list. Another piece of calcite, a little bit smaller. We've got some faceted versions of these stones as well. I'm gonna set them up on their pedestals. This guy is also a feldspar. It's not labradorite, this is labradorite. You can tell from the labradorescence, the uh, optical effect there on the surface. This has a very similar optical effect. It's moonstone. So it's got a much wider body and, a, and like a blue play of color to it. Here's another larger faceted feldspar to go up there with our labradorite and moonstone. And lastly, a red feldspar called andesine. So, We've got our most scale right here visualized. It's tangible, it's tactile, it's a little destructive, very comprehensive. We've got lots of examples. Talc is the softest, used in a powder. Gypsum is number two on the list. It's also used in powders. Calcite, number three. Really crazy cool optical uh, properties. At this point, we could, I, all three of these I can scratch with my fingernail. We've got fluoride at number four. We've got apatite at number five. Let's not forget kyanite on the way to glass. Differential hardness for kyanite means it could slide up near quartz or it can stay near apatite. We've got feldspars here at number six, quartz at number seven. At this point, my steel tweezers can no longer scratch any of these gemstones. It can scratch from feldspar down, but at this point, the stones are supreme. We've got quartz at number seven, all of these varieties, smoky, amethyst, rose, optic, large smoky. Topaz is our number eight, very, very hard. Number nine is corundum, ruby, sapphire, all of them, nine on the most scale of hardness. And lastly, the king of them all on the highest pedestal is diamond, the hardest natural substance. It cannot be scratched by anything on this table, no matter how many times and how hard you press on that diamond, it's not going to be scratched by any of these things. Also differential hardness, two different hardnesses in two different directions, they're both 10, making diamond the hardest thing on this table and on the planet. Hopefully you really enjoyed this episode. I love having like a visual sort of aid for all of the 10 levels on the most scale of hardness from one talc to 10 diamond. Let me know down in the comments if you would like us to do another video in this style covering, I don't know, toughness or stability or any of the other sort of scaled properties all gems and minerals have. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe, and please ring that bell if you don't want to miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.